What's up everybody, John the Morgal here checking in for a third episode of Debating Globetards, and this one is pertinent to uh, eclipses, right? Eclipses is something that lots of people have seen, especially back in, what was it, the August of 2017, 2018 eclipse, er everybody saw it, and there was a lot of things raised about it, but one of the things that was never really raised in the public conversation about eclipses was the complete uh, disagreement between reality and the ball earth theory. So let me just state this first and then we will uh, sort of go through your typical conversation with globetards about eclipses. But here's, the, here's a big problem with eclipses. We'll explain it first. And a lot of you know this. If if you do, then great, it's a good refresher, right? But the big problem with eclipses is the globetards say that the, the moon is like a thousand miles in radius, so like two thousand miles diameter, I believe. I might have that backwards, but I believe it's, it's at least a thousand miles diameter, sure. I think it's a thousand miles radius, two thousand miles diameter moon. They say it's a quarter the size of the Earth, basically, in mass. So that makes sense because they say that the the ball Earth uh, mass is um, four thousand miles radius, eight thousand miles diameter, right? So a quarter of that would be one thousand to four thousand, right? So that's what they say about the moon. However, the big problem is is that when we have eclipses, there's a definite shadow or like a uh, when you have total eclipses of the sun where the the moon, you know transits the sun in an eclipse fashion, um, what you have is a shadow of the moon. According to the ball earth theory, the moon should be a thousand mile radius object 250,000 miles away. But the problem that we're talking about here is the direct shadow of the moon is, um, the direct shadow of the moon, that's a strange vehicle, say hi to IMS, wow. Out. Hey, what's up, IMS? I don't know who that is, but hello. Um, <laughs> that's kind of weird. But so anyway, um, the shadow of the moon tends to be like 50 to 100 miles in diameter during solar eclipses, where the moon is supposedly transiting the sun, right? And so the big problem with that is that uh, and there's arguments against this, you know, well, I, sh I should be facing the opposite way. I think the sun is over my head, and probably the lighting is worse than it should be. So let's go over here with Butt Mutt and make sure that IMS knows that I'm not loitering in this park. I'm just sitting here trying to do a live... Well, good thing it's not live, right? Wow, I would have done fucked this up a long time ago if it were live. Too bad I can't edit it out, so it doesn't really matter. Come on, bubs. Yeah, the light. We're we're gonna go sit over here, baby. Wait. Air prefer. Okay, so now I should be better lit. I think, right? So the problem is anyway that when you have uh, total solar solar eclipses, the the absolute shadow area of the moon is usually like 50 to 100 miles in diameter. Bubba's is pulling me the other way. Um, but a lot of the time though, however, there's been cases a few times where the totality shadow of the moon was two or three miles in diameter so that you know this all this all p poses huge problems for the globe earth model you see because when you have a single light source such as the hypothetical sun in the globe earth theory um and a single obstruction of that light source there's no sort of way to demonstrate that that shadow cast upon some other object in space being ever smaller in terms of the cross-section of that object 
casting the light source, so the moon. So you can't you can't demonstrate shadows getting smaller in space as they, you know, gain distance from the obstruction, right? That's how light and shadows work. Uh, certainly, like, I'm at a basketball court. There's your proof, right? And so, if I had a basketball, could you, could you imagine a scenario where I could take a basketball and cast a shadow of that basketball that's like the size of a pinhead, like way on the other side of the basketball court. And the answer to that is no, you can't. Like, <laughs> it's not possible. But that's what we're expected to believe. So when you have a conversation with Globetards about this specific point, like you'll, you'll, You'll have to say, well, what do you know about eclipses? Because a lot of times they bring it up. They'll be like, well, what about eclipses? Eclipses prove the Earth is a spinning ball in outer space. Don't you know anything, you dummy? Right? That's their position. And my position is, well, what the fuck do you know about eclipses? Because the things that I know about eclipses prove to me that the heliocentric model is wrong. Because, again... You're the one telling me that the moon is a, you know, it's an object with a radius of a thousand miles. So a 2,000 mile diameter object, some quarter million miles away, casting a shadow that is essentially a pinprick compared to that, 50 or 100 miles in diameter, right? That's, that's what we're expected to believe. And I'm telling you, it's hogwash. The whole thing is ridiculous. But they won't get past the, the, the sort of thing that's been drilled into all of our brains since we were little kids that eclipses prove the ball Earth because the Earth is a ball and the moon is a ball. And the ball, 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 ball. Right? And it's, it's so hard. <sighs> so hard. So I think that, that ends it. Debating globe tards about eclipses is yet another example of where, you know, you need to coach them on what exactly it is that they believe. Again, that would be the Earth, the moon being some 2,000 mile diameter object, a quarter million miles away, basically casting a shadow that is usually about 100 miles in diameter, sometimes two miles in diameter, and whatever. So, that's a wrap on that one. Thanks, guys, so much for watching. Love you guys. Hopefully, uh, hopefully this whole social distance thing. Uh, good thing I don't have to have a, a social distancing thing against, wow, like, uh, against butt mutt, right? Because I'm less than six feet away from butt mutt. Whoops. And, uh, well, nothing's happened so far except for whatever that truck was that was kind of weird whatevs all right love you guys see you in the next one bye